so glad you're here. The Lord is good. His love and mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and His love and mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and His love and mercy endures forever. That's what God says. No matter what we're going through, God is good. God will carry us on. He will carry us. And uh, we just come to worship you, Holy Spirit. We come to praise you. We come to love on you this morning, Lord. Lord, we put on the garment of praise and word the Spirit of heaven is, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You are so good, Lord. You are so faithful to us, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, I release the mental of worship this morning, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship your Father. We praise your name, Lord. Lord, we just reverence your here, Lord. We reverence your presence, Lord. We reverence your spirit, Lord. And we say, Holy Spirit, Lord, have your way. Have your way in the service this morning, Lord. Have your way on your worship leaders this morning, Jesus, Lord. We just worship you and the spirit went through, Jesus, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. We do not trust in our understanding, Lord. But at all time, knowledge you, Lord, that you're good, that you're faithful, Lord, and you're guiding us, Lord. You're walking with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love never fell, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Lord, for your holiness, Lord. We worship you. <laughs> we worship you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. We're hungry for you. We're hungry, Lord, for the word of God, Lord. We're hungry for you. We're expecting that you will move in this place, Jesus, Lord. We're expecting you, Lord. Lord, 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 Together again, just praising the Lord. 
almost. So you never know. I could go back to who knows the stone age. Anyway, we let's shout Thomas Lauren.
But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Oh, it's crazy how It may look like I'm surrounded I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded
We just yield ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. It's your church. You can do what you want. You said you'd lead us if we would follow. And so, Lord, we don't want to lead. We, but we're good followers. And we trust you today. We trust you today. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Zita Lord, we magnify you today. We glorify you today. We exalt you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
okay? And, and the Lord has good for you. The Lord has good plan for you. You're just going to have to take that by faith. The Lord has good, and he has good plan for you. Hallelujah. Don't go by, by what it looks like. Don't go by what it feels like. Don't go by what anybody else has said. Just go by the, the, the word of the Lord that God has good and he has good plan for you. Well, do you have chapter and verse for that? Yes, I do. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For my thoughts and plans for you are good, saith the Lord, not of evil, that you might have an expected end, a good end. Hallelujah. You have to understand, it's not where you start out in life, it's where you end up. That's the important thing. As long as we end up with the Lord, that's all that really matters. Amen. Well, there's no such being in a rush this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're not going to run out of food at the restaurant. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We just, want, we just make room for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we just make room for you today. We make room. We just, we just lay everything aside. We leave, leave, every, leave everything aside just for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. turning yellow and purple, mm -hmm. you know, you're a, a degree above just a thunder sh shower. Mm -hmm. And I could see these yellow and purple thunder clouds, and mm -hmm. they've been following a lot of us. Mm -hmm. But uh, then I saw the storm chasers, mm -hmm. and I saw these people that are not afraid of these storms, and in fact, they go right to them, mm -hmm. and they just, they, they say, I want to see how you're going to act. And I could see God's people just stand up and say, we're not afraid of those clouds. Hallelujah. Instead, we run Hallelujah. to those clouds. Because they can't touch us, they can't destroy us, and they can't harm us. And I could see us being always God's people, and I say us, God's people. I could see God's people always being two steps ahead of that storm. It is trying to follow you. It's trying to overtake you. It's very menacing. You know how thunder is really loud? The devil likes the thunder very loud because he knows loud intimidates you. Don't let his loudness intimidate you. Amen. You are safe in the shield of God's protection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you don't, don't believe everything you see on Facebook. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln posted that not too long ago. So. <laughs> but there was, I, I saw a clip and it was about people that spoke in tongues and and the, the person that was speaking, they were so authoritative about it, and uh, they were they were saying that well, tongues, you know, the charismatic people, they're speaking in tongues, and he said, you know, that has to be a known language. It, it can't be this gibberish that they do, and so it said it has to be a known language. Do you know that there's over five thousand five hundred dialects in the world? Who's going to judge it? Who 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 can stand up there and? And I, I've heard some people speak in other, other in, in dialects. You know, I've, I've been to Africa, you know, and, and I've, I've seen the people speaking. And and uh, you, 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 how would you know? Okay. And so, and then they said, well, you know what? All tongues have to be interpreted. Well, again, uh, again, they, they don't know their Bible very well. That's right. Now, the gift of tongues needs to be interpreted. Praying in the Holy Ghost, First uh, uh, Corinthians fourteen verse two. This is uh, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. 
how be it in the spirit he speaketh mystery. So when we're praying in our spirit, in our prayer language, we're having a conversation with God. Amen? Amen. And so that one does not need to be interpreted, but if you want the interpretation, you can ask the Lord for it, but that one does not need to be interpreted. And yet, you know, we just, you know, people will believe that stuff, and anyway. The Lord's good, isn't he? Yes, he is. You want to do something spiritual this morning? Yeah. You want to do something that'll bless you? Yeah. Let's take up an offering right now. Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, if you got to do, if you were to get excited about what God does, if you could see what God what God sees about your giving, you know, we'd be a lot more excited about it. We did say that uh, we were taking up special offerings for the expenses with Brother Begley. We'll be doing that uh, following Sunday. He's going to be here in about, uh, I don't know, 15, 14, 15 days, something like that. Uh, more than two weeks later, but he's going to be here soon. And uh, there are some expenses that are in, in tail. We have in, uh, a room. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where he's at, but he, he will be, you know, they don't want you down to remodel and pound on his door anyway, so. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, we put my tickets as well. So it gets to be kind of expensive. So, but if you'd like to help us uh, towards that, we would appreciate that. And we will be taking up, uh, uh, he'll be with us on uh, September 13th, which is a Wednesday night, then Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. We will we will be taking up offerings for him all along. But on those nights, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, we'll be taking up offerings for the expenses of the meeting also. So we'll give everybody an opportunity to to minister. And Brother Begley is a, a prophet of God. I have known him for over 30 years. I've traveled halfway around the world with him. I would stake my life on that man. Okay? When you can trust somebody with your life, okay, then that, that means something. And uh, he is real. He is genuine. He was killed, seven years old. He was dead for 12 hours. Angels picked him up. He was pronounced. I said, how do you know he was dead? Well, seven doctors in two hospitals proclaimed him dead. If you want to take their advice and their testimony, he has his testimony. It's on, uh, uh, on YouTube. You can find that. And uh, uh, he was dead for 12 hours. And uh, But God raised him up, and he was God called him to preach. And so he's going to be here with us. And I tell you what, I believe we are in for a time. Yes, okay. oh, yeah. you know, we are in for a time of, of refreshing, a time of the Word of God, but especially a time in the Spirit. Okay, God does send times of refreshing to us, and so it's an opportunity for us to really, really go. So I'm going to encourage all of our congregation to really make efforts to be here because it, it is going to bless you. Amen? Amen. Are we all set? Let's say something good over our offering. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly it's a joy, a privilege, a joy, a privilege. to sow into the kingdom of God. <laughs> Every penny will produce <laughs> for God <laughs> and for me. The gospel will be preached, lives will be changed, and Satan will be stopped. It will produce for me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will God give back to me through the hands of men so that I can give again? I count it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. So nice to have a sister Falaki here with us. Always enjoy. So we do have uh, we do have some posters up here. Uh, I don't like to put them out too soon. Okay, now we have a big banner that we're going to put out on our sign, and if we put it out too soon, then then people they they they, they, they it gets you know they get familiar with it. But we'll put it uh, we're going to put the banners out about uh, about uh, September second, somewhere around through that. And so that'd be a good reminder. So. Anyway, we do have uh, 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 flyers up here. If you want to take some and you've got some places you can put them, uh, pray over and ask God to draw people to it. Because God's got some divine appointments. I have a message that is years ago. I'd love to do it again, but so let me. Divine, divine, uh, divine appointments, divine contacts, and appointed times. God has divine appointments for people. He has divine, I have been, Brother Begley was a divine contact in my life. I'm in, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
87, I believe it was, July. 10, 10, 10 to 12,000 people there. Kenneth Hagin says, well, the Lord wants to speak to somebody. So let's all get down on our knees and pray. And I said to myself, so, some poor fucker's going to get up. <laughs> I got down on my knees. And I'm, I'm just praying the Holy Ghost. And next thing I, I, I realize that I'm in this heated discussion. And I mean, I, I come to myself and I said, who are you arguing with? I thought I was, I, I was arguing with God. Because he was telling me, I want you to go to Africa. I want you to go to Nigeria. Because I had been uh, corresponding with an with a African pastor there. And sending him books and things to help him. And, and the Lord said, I want you to go. And I said, no, I'm not going to go. And he said, I want you to go to Africa. I said, no, I'm not going to Africa. He said, I want you to go to Nigeria, West Africa. I said, well, I thought, well, I'm going to play that my ace up my sleeve. I said, all right, Lord, I'll go, but under one condition. That you send me with a, tra a, 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 a missionary, an individual who has, has, has traveled before, and they know what they're doing. And I said, I don't know a single soul. So a few minutes later, he, he said, well, let's take a break. And so we, we walk out, and I thought, well, I'm going to go find a bathroom or find a coffee or something. So I walk out and I walk, bang, and we're ready to brother beg. And all we knew is we knew each other by sight a little bit. And he had been wanting to come to my church and preach, but the, the, the community we were in was kind of a small community, but too big. And he had been preaching at other churches, and I didn't want to upset them, so I just never had to come. And he says to me, Brother Mike, it's so good to see you. What's God been talking to you about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't lie. I said, well, he was talking to me about going to Nigeria, West Africa. He said, well, praise the Lord, I've never been to Nigeria, West Africa. I'd love to go with you. <laughs> Brother Baker and I have become very, very close friends. We have traveled halfway around the world together. God uses him. I mean, he has prophesied things to me, you know, way in advance, and, and great, great degree of accuracy. So, again, we're looking forward to. He's a man of dreams. He's a man of dreams. He has dreams, and and he keeps a pad and paper by his uh, bedside and, and so when I get with him I'll say, well, even when I talk to him on the phone I'll say to him, well, what's the Lord showed you a dream? He said, Pastor, he said, but, but, uh, uh, when I get there with you then I'll tell you. So, <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs this morning. Proverbs. Proverbs uh, chapter 20. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord today? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 20. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Can you hand me my phone? It's in the drawer. I wrote down the, the wrong scripture. And we, don't, we want to get it right. Okay. I know it's a proverb. Commitment. I said, okay. I'd like to do that, Lord. 
service. I started a series on commitment. The more, I, the longer I preached on that series, the less people came to church. I was so glad. The Lord said, you can stop now. I don't think there'll be anybody left. That's a true story. <laughs> but there, there's, you know, it says, God's looking for faithful people. Amen? Now there's something I've looked at this, about the book of Proverbs that's so different than, than any other book in, in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is contains prophecies and things that pertain to us today and the, com the coming of the Lord and everything. But the book of Proverbs really stands out totally different than any other book because the book of Proverbs uh, it, it's, it tells us about the nature of God. Okay, And God's nature never changes. God doesn't change. It tells us about the nature of man. Man never changes. You know, and man's nature never changes. And so it talks about the nature of, of, of people without God. And, and so it, it's a book that really transcends covenants. And so it's a, it's a book that's very applicable for us today even. And so when we look into the book of Proverbs, people say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, it, it's a book that transcends covenant. It's just because God doesn't change. People don't change. Their, their nature is still the same. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. Okay? People are going to be people. But it talks about relationships there. talks about what God will do for people that walk with him. It, it talks about what will happen to people that decide to walk with him. The Bible is it's very plain. And so it just simply talks about faithfulness. God is, is looking for a faithful a person, a faithful man, a, faith, a faithful woman. And so uh, faithfulness is, is something that... Now, God is faithful. Years ago, I remember I was uh, uh, between churches and I was just praying and seeking the Lord and, and nothing looked very promising. All doors seemed to be shut and uh, it seemed to be very dark. And the Lord said to me, Gary, look up as many scriptures as you can find about my faithfulness, God's faithfulness. And so I began to look them up. And so in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5... I believe it's verse 24 and 25. I found this one. And this one, I, I had to take a stand because uh, uh, I didn't have a, a church I'd been pastoring. That said in verse 24, Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. Faithful is he. So God is faithful. Yes, she is. And so I'm, I'm between churches. I, I don't have a church to go to. And I've got a family to provide for. And so the Bible says that you're worse than an infidel if you don't provide for your own family. You have to take care of your family. Mm -hmm. And so, but I realize in my spirit, if I go and I find a job, then then the ministry is ba is basically done. I won't be back in the I won't be going back into pastoring. And yet uh, the the need is great. I'm out of money. I have no place to go. I have no open doors. I have nothing. And uh, the Lord said, well, let's find the scriptures that, that talk about faithfulness. And I found this one. And it says, faithful is he that calleth you. Faithful is he that calleth you. I mean, you're talking about standing on the word. Now, I have done this before in my congregation. We've, we, we've, we've talked about it. I'll find a promise of God. You know, Philippians uh, 4, 19, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've taken all my bills, stuffed all my bills in there put my Bible on the floor, stood on my Bible, and said, Lord, I'm standing, I'm the true story, this, I've done it more than once, I'm standing on your word, I'm standing on your promises, if your word fails, I'm going down, but your word can't fail, and I'm still here today. Okay? And I found that verse that says, faithful is he that calls you, and I had to make a choice, either the gifts and the callings of God or without repentance, or that verse wasn't true. And so I chose I said, if I go down, my whole family goes down with it. So if it's just me, then no, no, no big problem. No big deal. But if it, it, with your whole family, you're, you're putting everybody's life on the line, in a sense. But you know what? God had a plan. I just didn't know it. Right. I couldn't see it. You know, I don't. maybe you've never been there, but I've been there. I don't know. God, where are you? <laughs> you know, it sounds like, you know, he says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. But you're saying, God... I can't see you, I can't feel you, I can't hear you, but he's still there. Amen. Why? By faith. Amen. 
We were teaching the other day, because uh, I remember someone had said, it's so hard to come into the Holy of Holies. You know, in the Old Testament it was. They could only come in once a year. And uh, But the, the Lord showed me over in Hebrews chapter 10. It says that we come by a new and living way into the Holy of Holies. It says we come boldly by the blood of Jesus. Boldly. We come boldly. And so I've read that verse. I've preached about that verse, but I've never done that verse. And so I sat down there one day, not too long ago. I said, Lord, I've told people it's easy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to come into the Holy of Holies. I'm going to do it. Because you said we could. And, and I read that scripture to him. I said, Lord, you said I could come to you by a new and living way into the Holy of Holies. And I could come, uh, I had to come boldly. And I had to come by the blood. And I knew I had to come by faith. And so I said, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming now. I'm coming by the blood of Jesus. I'm coming now by faith. Thank you, Lord. I'm in the Holy of Holies. And I didn't feel anything for a little bit. Then all of a sudden, I just began to, like, like I was just sinking into something so soft, like, you know, like, like down, feathers down, just so soft. I just kept singing. It was just so glorious. And I was trying to talk, and I couldn't talk. You just couldn't get any words out. Well, what are you going to say? You know? I mean, you could, I got there this morning again, too, for a little bit about, whew. That's nice. Sometimes I, you, my, your schedule gets busy, and I, I try to squeeze it in. You know, I said, Lord, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. I'm going to try to squeeze into the Holy Holy. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work that way. I did, have done that several times. I mean, I was sent down one day and said, well, look, we're going to go into the Holy Holy. So. But there is a way up. And God's word is true. Yes. If you haven't done it, just, just sit down and just say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to come. And say, well, nothing happened. Keep doing it. He'll come. He'll come. Amen? Amen. And so God is, says that uh, he's looking for a faithful man, looking for a faithful woman. Because uh, God is a faithful God. Amen? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the definition of, of, of faithful there is to trust, trustworthy, truth, and dependable. Yes. God is truth. God is dependable. Mm -hmm. And yet his nature is in us, and we're to be that way too. Hallelujah. The Amplified Bible reads on that verse, it says, Many a man proclaims his own loyalty and goodness, but who can find a faithful and trustworthy man of God or a woman of God? Who can find one? So God is looking. Does God find me faithful? I have to ask myself, you know, I, I can't... When I, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking of our, our congregation. And I'm thinking about faithfulness. And I said, Lord, there's so many of us been so faithful. I mean, there's so many. I think about Pastor now. I mean, man, she's been faithful. Faithful for years and years. 23, 24 years you, you've been here with us, okay? Uh, Dr. Fla uh, Dr. Evan Flavia, okay? Amate and Amaki, I mean, they, when I first met them, they were, they were these little kids sitting up there on dad to sit on a pillow to play the piano. They tried to, they, the mom and dad make them play the piano for me. They weren't too excited about it, but they did it. <laughs> Just so many, so many of you have been so faithful, so faithful. Okay? I mean, every, every, virtually everyone has been faithful to, to be here, to, to come and to stand by me and to, you know, be a part of this church and and what we, we don't sometimes understand is not, it, the faithfulness is going to take us someplace. You, you, if you're going to be faithful to God, and he's looking for, he's going to take you someplace with that. And so it's going to pay for you and I to, to be found faithful. So God is looking for people that are faithful. Faithful, and there's many different ways that we can be faithful. Okay? We can be faithful in our prayer life. We don't let that slip. We can be faithful in, in, in studying the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, you know, just feeding on the Word of God. We can be faithful with our praise. We can be faithful with our worship. We can be faithful in coming to church. We can be faithful with our tithing. We can be faithful with our giving. And it all pays off. You say, how do you know? Because God's Word says so. Yes, yes. God's Word says it. It pays off. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 20. I remember Creflo Dollar preached this many years ago, and I never been able to find that sermon, but boy, was it a good one. And, I, and he used this verse right here. A faithful man and a faithful woman shall what? Abound. Shall what? Abound. With what? 
Classic. Ooh. I just took a turn. Now here's the benefits of being 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 faithful. It says if you'll be faithful, that the blessings will begin to abound. Now you know what? We get a blessing here, we get a blessing there. But do you know too, very many people that are abounding in blessings? Hallelujah. Well, the more faithful we get to serving the Lord and living for Him, the more benefits there are. Amen. The more blessings there are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I find I've got room to be more faithful. Well, i got room for more blessings. In my faithfulness, I, I, you know, I, I say this multitudes of times, Lord, you've been good to me. Lord, you have been good to me. He has blessed me. The Bible says that over in, in the book of Psalms, it says, "Pray for the peace of Jerusalem; they that love thee shall prosper." Mm -hmm. And I pray for the I pray for the peace of Jerusalem every day. Mm -hmm. And I, and it says that, but they shall prosper. And I used to say, "Well, Lord, prosper me." Now one day I realized, Lord, you have prospered me. Lord, you have prospered me. Yes. Dear Lord, Lord, you have prospered me. Yes. I, I'm prosperous in, in the things of God. And as I continue to be faithful to pray for Israel, I'm a, I become more prosperous. I say, Lord, you, you, your word's true. I said, you, you, your word's true. I'm, I'm prosperous. Your, your word's already come into pass in my life. Yeah. Why? Because I just would do the word of God. You stick with it. It's not, a, it's not something, well, we, oh, let me give that a try and see if it works. It won't work for you. Just guarantee it won't work. We, we, we're not people that try the word. We are people oh. that do the word. The Bible said to be doers of the word, not hearers only. And so as we do the word, okay, it tells us that a faithful man, a faithful, a faithful woman, now this is what God says, will abound with blessings. And you might say, well, I, I can't see where I've been abounded with very many blessings, Pastor. Well, then this, maybe we need to work on the faithfulness part. Just getting faithful. Getting faithful to God. There's the part that people can see. Then there's the part that only you and God can see. Okay? I don't know about you, but I, I love being here. I love being in church. Amen. I love this presence. There's just something about the corporate part. Amen. I mean, I, I, I love my fellowship that I have with God at home. And then, no, I mean, I, we, we, we spend time praying together and worshiping together. And, and, uh, and I love that too. But there's just something about being here with everybody. Amen. Because whether, whether you like it or not, we're family. Yes, we are. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. There's always some black sheep in the family. But I'm going to Kemp by name, so. But we're family. Okay? And the families that get into little squabbles, you know. Uh, Amati, did you and Amati ever squabble a little bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which is still love, so sitting next to her. She's your sister. Well, we might have a little squabbles from time to time about little things, but in the end, we're still family, and, and, and we love each other, and his love is in us, amen? amen. But as you get to be faithful, I, I think of uh, Charles and Emily, you know, they've been with us a long time, okay? And God's been faithful to give them more children. Do you want more? No. <laughs> The Bible says you can, you, you can have a quiver full of children. <coughs> but God, but God's, been, you know, God's been faithful with you know, jobs. God's been faithful with promotions. God's been faithful with healing. God's been faithful with deliverances. God's been faithful with watching over all, all, of, all of us. Okay? And I, I know we got uh, Tony back there. Okay? Uh, Brother Tony, I, saw, I said, he, he looks so good when he comes into church. I said, are you speaking this morning? He's all dressed up. <laughs> and his mother just, just recently graduated to heaven. God's faithful. Yes, and God's faithful. Yes. Okay? You know, so, so uh, 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 Georgina's in, in uh, Tony's future. Okay? So we stay faithful to God. We don't get upset with God. Not everything goes the way we think it should, but God still... I've always found, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, I have gotten that mad at God. I have. I've lost my, got upset with God because he didn't do what I told him to do when I told him to do it. <laughs> See, that's not smart, Pastor. I know now. <laughs> I got so mad at God, I picked my Bible up and I threw it at him one time. And like I said, he's, he's pretty fast on his feet for a little guy. <laughs> I could do it. But God knew, God understood. 
that understood. It, but you know, just sometimes in our immaturity, you know. But God, God, you know, when He saved you, He factored in your your stupidity and mine too, and He still loves us. He still has got a plan, okay? And just simply tells us a faithful man. So I, have, as long as I will stay faithful, I will stay in the blessings of God. Amen. Faithful to Him. Faithful to serve Him. Faithful. I'm, I'm not a. Uh, we used to sing a song years ago called "Casual Christian." I don't want to be a casual Christian. You know, we, we can't afford to be that way. The, the days we're living in, Jesus is coming soon, and it'll pay for you. It'll pay off. In what would they would say in space, big time, in these last days to become more and more faithful. Okay. Why the world is getting darker and darker. The world is getting more evil. Evil men are waxing worse and worse. But yet, it tells us in the Word of God that God, God will, comes true for us. It says in Isaiah 6, The eyes shine for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee in the earth. Darkness and upon men gross darkness, but upon thee light. So God is, in the midst of a very dark world that we're living in, it's getting darker, we're, we're going to shine brighter and brighter. Amen. Hallelujah. People will come and, 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 and look for you and find you out. Okay? Want to know why Why are you shining? Okay? When Carol walked in and, and uh, Miss, Miss Kim said, uh, uh, what was, what's your husband's name? Harold. Harold. She mentioned his name, but all I heard was Carol. Okay? Carol. 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 I called you... Okay. Close. Close. <laughs> Cheryl. Okay. Don't blame it on me. She had the microphone up there. She, she muffled her words. She glowed for a little bit. So I knew then that, that uh, the Lord was going to say something. I said, I'm not going to say anything to anybody. I said, I don't know what to say. I don't have anything. Then he started to share some things with me. You come a long way, baby. I thought, that's a strange thing to say. But, you know what? God just chooses to, you know, whatever. Amen. Hallelujah! A faithful man. Say, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. And getting more faithful. I'm blessed. I'm getting more blessed. Hallelujah. Notice that word abound? That doesn't, that doesn't mean little. It means much. Abound. Abound. You know, you probably don't find too many people abounding with blessings, but uh, you know what? I do. I, I abound with blessings. You know what? Why don't you say this? Just say, well, I don't know if that's really true. And I, well, make it a faith statement. I abound with the blessings of heaven, the blessings of God, because I'm faithful. And I've been found faithful. God, my Father, has found me faithful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, make that your confession. Watch the blessings come. Watch the blessings come. Why? Because this is for today. God is looking for a faithful man and faithful woman. Okay? You can be faithful. You know, are you faithful to your job? Do you show up? What would happen if you don't show up? Well, you wouldn't have a job. You would be, you know, you would be given a pink slip. Well, we stay faithful to God. Okay? God, God is good. Okay? All the time. And we live for Him. Okay? You know, it, whether you know it or not, you've been drafted. Okay? You're, you are in the army. I think it's First, first Timothy chapter 2 talks about it. It says that you endure hardness as a good shoulder. You got drafted. Okay? You got drafted. Okay? And he puts you in his army in a place that, that he has chosen for you. I did not choose to be a pastor. My choice was to have my own hunting and fishing store selling worms and minnows and motorboats and, and, and guns and bow and arrows and tackle and everything else. That, was, that, that to me, that, was, that would have been you know heaven on earth. But God had a different plan. And I had to, I had to give up. I had to, I had to let that dream die. Okay? Isaiah 6 1, please. <clears throat> Isaiah 6 1. 
It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Sometimes something has to die in your life before you can really see God. Sometimes you have to let some things die. Sometimes God wants some things to die. Why? So that that uh, he could that you know he can do what he wants to do. And I had some things in my life that because I, I was born or not born and raised, but I was I grew up on a hunting and fishing resort in Upper Michigan. I lived on the edge of this beautiful, huge lake. My I had a, a cottage, uh, a log home I built with my own hands. I lived on the edge of the forest. I lived right on the edge of the lake. And in the fall, I could carry my shotgun while I wandered around working at the resort. I could shoot at ducks and geese. And, and you talk about, I lived in paradise. During the day, I could take my fishing pole, tie, tie it to the end of the dock, strap it there, and throw a bait out there and come back, and I'd catch fish like that. And just reel them in and go home with them. I, I lived on water. I had boats and motors. And I mean, I, I was in heaven, except for the mosquitoes and the black flies. I mean, <laughs> But God had done something else for me. And I mean, I had, there, there, there were some things, that, you know, something had to die for me to be able to, to do what I'm doing today. And I've never regretted it. Never have re regretted it. Being, you know, let it, letting that go. Okay. Because, you know, I, I had, I, you leave my mother and father, I left my mom and dad and family and everything, basically, that you loved. And, uh, but God's given me God gave me Flavia. She's my, my 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 mom. Even though I'm a little older than she is, I think uh, I just call her mom. Why? Because she checks on me to make sure she says, "Is no, I'm taking care of you, Pastor." I said, "Oh yes, yeah, taking real good care." Are you sure? I said, "Yes." Yeah. Yeah. She cooking good for you. Oh yes, yeah, oh yes. Yeah. She's always checking on me, make sure I'm I'm doing okay. Is everything there good at, at home? Yes, everything's great at home. You know, how's everything at the church? I said, the church is blessed. How's the finances of the church? I said, we're blessed. We're blessed. She is checking on everything. Awesome. A little bit nosy, but the, she's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> Hallelujah. Called me this morning to let me know that she couldn't make it this morning. So I said, well, that's all right. I was praying for you. I was praying for your whole family this morning before we came to church anyway. So anyway. But there's blessings that God has for you. Well, can you tell me what the blessings are? I don't know. Maybe your blessings will be in, 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 in your house. Maybe the blessings, you know, what an awesome blessing it is just to have your children serving the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. Oh, my gosh. People would, would give up a fortune just to know that their children are going to live and serve God. What a blessing that is. What a blessing it is to have a happy home. Amen. What a blessing it is to have a nice, shiny car. Amen. I remember, I remember, I, I got this little—I don't know, like, like a little Ford Pinto or something, a little this little thing. Man, I always wanted a, a new car. And I remember after about six weeks, my ashtray was full and the cigarette butts were all over the floor. I thought, this thing's dirty, you know. But the blessings of God are forever. Yeah, God can give you shiny new cars. God can give you a beautiful. Home. I remember. When I first moved here, I, I came here in, in uh, September. We started this church in September 1998, September 11th. And uh, so it's going to be this September, it's going to be 25 years that we've been here. And Garnet Urquhart was alive at the time, and he was a real estate agent. And, and he was coming, we were meeting in, in uh, Darren and Tanya Sullivan's basement and starting the church. And, uh, and he was coming, he said, no, I, I don't, I'm not, don't, don't count on me. Because I'm just going to be here for just a little bit. I'm, I'm going to be here for a little bit, but I, I really go to another church, but I'm here just to help you get started. And I said, well, praise the Lord for that. He said, but you can't count on me. So he was, he was helping me find a house. And, and the, the amount of money I had for a house uh, was, wasn't, wasn't enough to have a, a decent house. And so he was showing me, showing me all these, these homes that were not satisfactory and and finally, he says, well, I'm going to show you one. He says, it's way out of your price range. He says, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So he drove me out there to Douglas, and he, I just pulled in the driveway. And I said, man, that's it. That is it. Didn't even walk inside yet. And that was a house that he had listed. And uh, uh, he said, it's just way out of your reach. I said, I, I know. And uh, 
But I just, after he'd leave me, I'd go find that house again. I'd go park it in the, in the driveway and I'd say, thank you, Lord, for my house. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, Garnet went to work and he got the guy down from 179000 to 117000 Yes. And so I just miraculous, I just had enough. That's a I said to the Lord, Lord, I would love to have that, that home. And the Lord said, I want you to have it too. He didn't say he'd make, he'd make for it for me, but, but uh, you know, today we're debt free. You know, and you know it's been nice, you know, it's nice being debt free. Let me say that again. Because I'm talking to a lot of people, you're not debt free. I'm debt free. How'd you do that? Faith. Believe in God. And every day, multitudes of times during the day, Thank you, Lord, I'm debt free. Thank you, Lord, I'm debt free. Thank you, Lord, I'm debt free. There was a time I was $45,000 in debt. God got me out. God made a way. People say, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. I said, that's my own business. I'm just talking to God. <laughs> People think you're crazy you talk like that. I mean, I tell you, they say, you can't do that. You don't get anything like that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. When you're faithful, okay? Now, when I came here, we started, you know, we, we, we met in August of 1998 at, at the uh, Fredericton Inn. We had a, a room there that uh, we had some services. And uh, we had uh, uh, 28 people that said that they would come and be a part of a church if I would start it. And I said, you know, are you sure? Yes, we, we're committed to you. So I said, okay, then I had to go back to Pittsburgh for just a little bit. And then within, I think, 10 days or so, I was back again. And by the time I got back, I had 13 people. Everybody else left. I said to the Lord, Lord, are you sure you want me here? I only have 13 people. He said to me, he said, you're doing better than me. I only started out with 12. I thought, well, that's right. That's right. Well, a couple of years earlier, a year earlier, I'd been out in, in Loch Lubish, Alberta, preaching for my son in his church. And there were some people who came down from Fort McMurray, which is two hours north of where my son was at, which is pretty far north. And, uh, and so they, they kind of liked me, liked how, how I ministered and everything. And so uh, they contacted me and, and asked me if I would be interested in their church. They had a nice church of 400 people. Up, you know, had a nice building, had a, had a nice home, and nice salary. And so they said to me, would you consider being our pastor? And I said, well, how long has your pastor been gone? He said, oh, he's not gone yet. I said, well, does he know that you're looking for another pastor? He said, no, we haven't told him yet. I said, forget it. If they would do that behind his back, they would do that to me. If they will do that behind my back, they would eventually do that to me. I said, forget it. Now I'm back and here in Fredericton. We've got our church up and running with 13 people. I get a phone call from Fort McMurray. And they said, well, do you think you'd be interested in the church now? The pastor's gone. And we got 400 people. And I'm thinking, 400 versus 13. But I gave my word to the 13. I gave my word to them. You see, if your word, you're, you're no better than your word. That's right. You're no better than your word. If your word is no good, you're not no, any good. God, Jesus is the word. And if his word is no good, then none of us good. But he is the word, and we need to be people of our word. And I made a commitment to, to the people, those 13 people. I said, if you'll stick with me, I'll stick with you. You know what? And, and they have stuck with me. Many of them have stuck. Okay? Many have gone on to other places, but you know what? God's been faithful. We've come a long ways from that basement. Okay? Why? Because a, a faithful man will abound with blessing. Yeah. You say, yeah, but he did that because you're a pastor. No, I did it because I'm faithful. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Am I perfect? No. You're not perfect either. But you know what? We can still find room for, for more faithfulness in God. Yeah. More faithfulness in living for Him. More faithfulness in serving Him. More faithfulness in worshiping Him. Yes. More faithfulness in our giving and our tithing. Okay? Yes. Those things pay off 
in the end. Jesus is coming soon. Okay. And actually, this, I didn't mean to go that direction, but let's go to uh, Hallelujah. Luke 16. Luke 16. Verse 10. Luke 16, 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Now this is how God tests us, tries us. He, said, he gives us a little. He said, now if, I can, if, I, if you can be faithful with the little, I will give you much. Everybody say much. Much. Much is better than little. But he starts us out with the little. Okay? And, and, and if we're faithful with the little, much is in store. Much is down the road for you. Okay? But you have to be found faithful. He that is faithful in that which is little is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Okay? You see, if, 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 you, if, you can't, if you can't trust God with your finances, God, God's not going to be able to... There's an old saying, if God can get it through you, God can get it to you. You have to remember that. If God can get it through you, God can get it to you. Okay? And so we find that uh, uh, God is looking for faithful people. Now let's look at another scripture just for a moment. At Matthew 25. Matthew 25. This is an end time scripture. Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 are both end time chapters. Okay? Not just a few isolated verses, but these are end time chapters. This is talking about the talents that, that people have been given, the abilities, the finances, whatever. And it's a parable that Jesus talked about when he comes back. Verse uh, 20, And he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained uh, besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Everybody say, well done. Well done. The most imper important words you're ever going to hear in this life and the next life is those two words. Well done. But I always like to say this and add it in too. If you haven't done anything, there is no well done. There are things God's called you. You have to understand, you've got a calling on your life. God's called you. God is depending on you. God needs you. I was listening to the... To, I, I like to... I'm driving in, I like to listen to... Uh, uh, the Bible, you know, just Alexander Scorby reading the Bible. I just, I just really enjoy his voice. And I was trying to get something on First Peter or something like that, and all I kept getting was Esther. I thought, dear Lord, I don't want to listen to the book of Esther. But, yeah. but anyway, I ended up listening to the book of Esther. Well, that was good. That was really good. I, did, I found out I didn't know that much about the book of Esther. And, uh, and, and he said to her, he says, you know, if, if you won't do what God's calling you to do, you're going to be lost, and your family's going to be lost, and God will find somebody else to take your place. Okay? But God, you, know, you have to understand that God needs you. God's anointed you. God's put talents and abilities and giftings in you. And God, heaven needs you. Heaven needs you. And the Lord said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. You've been faithful. You know what? He doesn't ask much of us, does he? He doesn't ask much. 10%. You get 90. My son Steve would say to me, Dad, I can't afford to tithe. I just can't. I don't have the money. I can't afford to tithe. He said, well, you need to tithe anyway. Can't afford to. Can't afford to. I said, but you need to. And so one day he called me up and said, Dad, you're not going to believe this, but I started tithing. I said, well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to hear that. He said, I found out I have more money now 
uh, with the 90% than I had with the 100%. I said, that just sounds like God, doesn't it? He said, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. He said, don't worry about it. He said, God's just blessing you. Amen. Amen. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler. Oh man, look at that. I will make thee ruler over many things. I wonder what that means. I don't know if that, that any of us know, but I know it sounds pretty good. I like the next one. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you're going to, you're going, in, down here God gives you a little bit. Everybody say a little bit. A little bit. God gives you a little bit. And then he tells you with that little bit, if you'll be faithful with a little bit, you are going to rule and you are going to reign. And you're going to be in the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 A faithful man, a faithful woman will abound with blessings. I don't think any of us have seen the extent that God can bless. I, I, never said that. I don't believe any of us have seen yet the extent to what God can bless us. Amen. In this fight. Even down here, yep. amen. And so we just—I just wanted to share that little bit with you about being faithful. So, Pastor Nelly, you might come wrap this all up for us this morning. Like I uh, like to say, well, I've done it again. I've done made myself happy. Preach <laughs> <laughs> myself happy. Preach myself happy. <laughs>